lots of strange stuff going on, prophetic things unfolding uh, all over the world. Um, think about it. Are those who may have plans for the future that they do so in, in secret meetings behind secure doors and, and they're influencing economies. They control energy resources along with weather manipulations, artificial intelligent technologies happening. Um, they manage to take control of the world's wealth and control the, the world's banking systems. I mean, they, so they got armed guards, right? Armed guards in secure places that inside the secret meetings having these things going on. Could they possibly have a, a world government able to topple nations, these ones that want to desire a new world order? Remember, there is a new world order coming. The Lord Jesus is coming to put the world in proper order. So consider how, you know, we've got elected officials they're meeting behind these highly secured doors in, in privacy with, um, and they say it's for national security reasons. I mean, really, what are they hiding? Um, why, why did they do such things? Did they help create laws that contradict the campaign promises, maybe? Um, you know, it tells us in, in the scriptures, like, um, Luke eight seventeen says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, now, is there anything here that shall not be made known and come abroad? So, you know, they've got these agendas, and God's got his agenda. Um, they've got their managed agenda, and he oversees everything. And so, you know, the, the, they've got the ones on the left and the ones on the right, and still somehow they seem to be continually moving so, towards the same destination. I mean, what's with that? I mean, each time you're seeing more freedom eroding in the processes. Um, and now we got, you know, we got many national, international leaders today that are openly calling for, for the need for a one, a one world government. Um, <laughs> you know, it always seem extreme. Look, you know, it, it, Christians should imitate Christ, right? So, you know, it, it tells us we should expose this stuff in darkness, right? Um, let's consider, you know, the other side also. The, the Lord, I mean, he was extreme. It's, you, you can't get more extreme than walking on water and healing everybody around you. Um, you know, using mud and spit to heal the blind person. That was pretty extreme, walking on water and all. Um, ax, uh, handles floating and uh, parting the Red Sea. I mean, really. Second Corinthians 10, 3 tells us, for we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh, right? So this is a cosmic war going on. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty, mighty. Through God to pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We can do this. If he says we can do it, we can do it. Right? Put on the mind of Christ, church. So, I mean, how are we going to do that? you got like 30,000 thoughts, 70,000 thoughts a day. we got to capture each one of them. Okay, so um, what I've done in, in conferences, uh, and, and I found this has been very successful, so we'll do it right now. It's in my book, um, I, What Was I Thinking? So if you would just do this with me, we'll start counting backwards from 99. Go 99, 98, 97. Come on, I can hear you. <laughs> and, and now, at the same time, simultaneously, we're going to say the ABCs. No, you can't say, no, you can't do it like 99A, 90, no, at the same time. Bring them together, okay? Great. You just discovered you can't do it. And neither can you entertain a holy thought and an unholy thought at the same time. You get to choose. So, best not to believe everything you think. Test the spirits. You get to choose moment by my moment. Test the spirits. To simplify, every thought goes down a, a pathway of fear or it goes down a pathway of faith. So I'm not taking this lightly. I understand, you know, some of you now, you're, you're watching this and you're, you're experiencing all kinds of things that have happened. That You've been hurt, you've been offended, you've been wounded. Even within the church, a lot of times systems, right? You've been hurt, um, offended by the, those that are supposed to, to help take care of you. Nevertheless, in, in the midst of such battles, you still have the advantage as a child of God. You can accept or reject thoughts because it's the way he designed you, right? Providing, you know, you don't get one of those brain implants that they're, they're pushing now. Um, that you can affect the whole way that you function in this world simply by learning to practice controlling your thought life. Because 
thoughts when they become poisonous. Like, I'm, I'm not going to forgive them. They offended me. Well, you know, think about Jesus hanging on the cross, right? That, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do, right? And then he leads the deep in, in the salvation, hanging on the cross next to him. He was a way to go. So that's our example, right? So if, if you give entertaining spirits of bitterness and resentment and you know, long term, you, you're probably going to develop a sickness and a disease. The research is from the secular universities, right, is showing that the, clearly you know, your thoughts have a direct link to your, your body through the mind, body, spirit, soul connection. You know, everything I've, I've shared this many times, right, involving um, different nerves, chemical pathways going through the hypothalamus gland. So keep in mind, your hypothalamus gland acts like the brain of the endocrine system, and it only responds to what you're thinking. So think holy thoughts. When you meditate on the Word of God, healing is going to happen to all your flesh because you're going to build lush, healthy memory trees in your brain, and, and it's going to release you know, healing molecules. Your heart's going to release this incredible chemical called ANF, and your kidneys are going to release uh, the, the molecule of joy, uh, which is DHEA. Listen, if 98% if of sicknesses and diseases are a result of what goes on in our thought life, Hallelujah. The 98% of sicknesses and diseases can be cured by putting on the mind of Christ, seeing things from a heavenly perspective. Get in, back in your heavenly chair there. So, you know, not practicing, um, you know, allowing yourself to be offended. Um, do what Jesus did. Forgive, show mercy, extend mercy, help restore and heal those that, that cross your path, all those that you, you encounter each day. And it's one of the reasons the Lord... I think invented repentance. So you can use it. It tells us in Second Corinthians seven one, having therefore these promises. It's a promise. Dearly beloved, that is you, the church. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, be perfecting holiness in the fear of God, the reverence of God. So your flesh and spirit can get dirty. And repentance is, you know, it's like taking a you know, cosmic shower. I mean, <laughs> it cleanses you from all unrighteousness. First John 1 night, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Look, it's been scientifically proven. This is how, you know, you secrete healthy chemicals, serotonin and dopamine, endorphins, equipments, because healing to happen in your body. And it's all there in your thought life. All those chemicals you need are triggered by the memory trees in your mind. So look, it's no longer some great mystery. The Lord has, has been showing this stuff to us in our holy guidebook to the supernatural for thousands of years. So um, let's just get on with it, eh? <laughs> um, let me show you something else. As, as a watchman on the wall, you know, the enemy has already infiltrated. Think about that. Um, and we've got this celebrated uh, futurist theoretical uh, professor, uh, Michio Kaku. He, he made this statement not long ago that artificial intelligent robots um, said, perhaps we shall have to put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they have murderous thoughts once they become self-aware. They're going to become self-aware? Are you serious? As my friend Pastor Paul Begley would say, are you serious? Robots becoming self-aware? So he made these comments during a speech he gave at the World um, Government Summit in, in Dubai where he stated his ideas on how the evolution of robots and the artificial intelligence uh, community, it, it's going to be bigger than the automobile industry. Yes, the World Government meetings, right? Um, so now you got people, you know, that are afraid of this and afraid of that, and God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He, he, you know, he gave us prophecy, not to scare you, but to prepare you for what's coming. Um, so this next, you know, part of the, the history here, um, let's not be naive, you know, what's going on here. Um, so if, if, if this is the, this, the plan, you know, to have robotic stuff in, in, infiltrating, um, Professor Kaku went on to expound on his ideas, um, having the, you know, the, the robots that, that he said uh, currently they have the intelligence of a, of a bug, but he thinks that the near the end of the century they'll be so small till they can even evade the most sophisticated fail-safe systems. And at that point, he started recommending that humans merge with machines, unless those days should be shortened. There 
shall be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ and Israel, Messiah Yeshua, is coming back. Physically, he's going to come back, and the church is going to come back on flying white horses with him following. It's going to be amazing. And as an equestrian, I'm quite excited about that prospect. Fight back, overcomers. Trust Papa God for every detail. Stay in faith because all things are possible with God. And, and I just pray right now the supernatural peace and healing provision, protection, cover you now with oceans of a godly love, whatever it is you need, that the Lord fulfill the desires of your heart that he put in there. Um, if anybody's more interested in this, you can check out my last book, um, Unmasking the Future. If you want to know more about how your thoughts are created, check out What Was I Thinking? Um, we just came out with the, the teacher manual to go along with the student workbook. So you can have Bible studies and, you know, it's going to help people get recovered. Reconciliation is a good thing, right? 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. At the Upper Room Fellowship, Sunday mornings, if you're to join us, looking for the Remnant Church, you can join us online on 7 o'clock on Thursdays, um, Eastern Standard Time, broadcasting from Deception Detection Radio. And if you're being blessed by what our ministry's been doing, help us reach more people in the world, you can send in a donation, which takes deductible and all that, at uh, theupperroomfellowship.org. So go and love people as God loves you, minister healing and miracles in the almighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Messiah, Yeshua. All things are possible when we align with God. Amen. See you here, there, or in the air.